Wright back with another Destiny 2 video and I wanted to talk a little bit about something story related today. Uh, not necessarily just about Zavala's second Sever mission where he was healed by the light of forgiveness and trauma and things. Um, I really have enjoyed the, the seasonal storyline so far in terms of uh, the writing to get these characters to kind of face their demons. Uh, what I am talking about here today though is from the dialogue this week, it feels like we are headed towards something where this may not go how we're predicting. So pretty much what I would expect from a normal season is the way it's been laid out so far is we do, you know, two weeks of Crow and his nightmare and then two weeks of Zavala and his nightmare and then two weeks of Keitel and her nightmare and then some final story quests. And we've severed the nightmarish ties to from Leviathan to the moon and all as well, like whatever. Um, I just don't know if things are going to play out that way. Uh, we got some stuff once again, uh, hinting at <laughs> Zavala may be in danger. I, I don't know how to feel about that, but he talks about kind of essentially giving up the light and he kind of gives a speech about like, maybe people shouldn't live forever. Uh, and the idea is that maybe he's going to um, just not resurrect one day. Um, I have my doubts that they'll actually follow through with that, although it is an interesting philosophical discussion for Destiny all the same. It's kind of the old... Um, I remember the in True Blood, back when it was actually okay, in the first few seasons, there was this, like, the oldest vampire ever. It was, like, a few thousand years old. And he just one day was like, I just, like, I, you know, this is enough. And he just, like, lets himself get melted by the sun because um, he's just been, like, alive too long. So that's kind of seems where Zavala's headspace is at. Uh, but besides that, Eris makes note that, like, the ship is doing something like besides what they what we know it's doing already like kind of with the the, the bonds of nightmare energy um it is like rearranging itself essentially to meet kind of new purposes i'm not exactly quite sure what that means but definitely has something to do with the giant ergagor infection uh and she also makes the comment that it's like something feels off like this has been just kind of too simple or too easy so far i don't remember the exact line but it was something along those lines like this has been kind of too easy um in terms of the, the looping threat ahead of us and what i'm wondering is kind of where we go now with the keitel thing i was wondering why keitel was safe for last because i thought zavala would be safe for last given that this is a brand new character his wife safi who we've never seen before and it's like this big you know glimpse into his, his history and then it seems a little odd to have keitel and her nightmare which is gall uh saved for last year and someone made the note on twitter where they, they said they were looking forward to seeing uh the giant ghost of gall like hanging out in um <laughs> uh in the the helm once we've uh had keitel deal with her her demons and stuff like alongside the other two which I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think this is going to go the way we think, and I think things are about to go wrong with Keitel. Maybe not next week, but the week after, when we're supposed to get into like forgiveness mode or whatever and dealing with your own demons. If you think so, Keitel doesn't really believe in this whole like spirit bonding, talk about your feelings thing in the first place. She was very kind of hesitant to do it to begin with, uh, and then. I am a little confused about her nightmare being gall, and I wonder if that's on purpose. Um, we got, a, you know, we, we, we've had some level of history between Keitel and Gaul. Like, we know he was, like, kind of her mentor. I, like, in duality, I, like, almost got the vibe that, like, maybe they were, like, sort of almost dating. I, I don't know. I still don't know what to make of that. But they have some sort of relationship slash rivalry. Um, and it wasn't, you know, Gaul clearly wanted to lead the Cabal at one point, And Keitel was, you know, Kallus' handpicked successor. And then Gaul did the whole Red War thing. It's just like, I don't really get why Keitel's nightmare would be Gaul. And what I'm wondering is if through the course of this trauma discovery, you know, we kind of figure out that Keitel is manifesting the wrong thing. Like, very much it seems like Keitel's nightmare should be callous uh, rather than Gaul. And, like, this could be some, like... <laughs> therapy misdirection thing where like oh you're focusing on your wrong problems and stuff and like you're not really getting to the real root of the issue and the root of that issue is obviously her father um in 
in the duality dungeon, uh, you know, there's nightmares of all sorts of different things, but the final boss is a nightmare of Kaido, which is like Callus's. I think the section is called Callus's greatest shame or something like that. And so it, it, it just makes sense to me that they would be kind of each other's nightmares and that Keitel would be kind of forced to confront her feelings about her father, both in terms of like what she did to him with the coup and like how he has behaved as her father and like the relationship that they had that really soured. Like you just I don't see any of that with Gaul, like unless we're just missing some giant pieces of context here. I've gotten a couple lines from Gaul. Uh, after doing the the nightmare event this week, where he's talking about like Kaido's like, ah, I remember when you were in the arena, you know, killing people with your blade, and everyone was cheering, and he's like, no one's no one cheered louder than you, and she's like, yeah, and like I just I don't really get <laughs> the relationship here, first of all, nor do I know why Gaul would be Kaido's worst nightmare over Callus. So I do wonder if we will eventually be like, oh, actually, you know, the real root of your trauma is Callus, and we have to fight some sort of nightmare version of Callus as the kind of final key to unlock things here. Um, that they brought the throne room back. We had we were in the throne room for like two seconds uh, for the intro mission. So my guess is some sort of Callus nightmare based throne room fights uh, down the road here to kind of fully put Keitel's issues to bed. Um, but past that, I also have trouble believing that we're just going to solve the Callus problem right now where... We don't even fully understand what he's doing with the pyramid in the first place. Like, he's communing with it and using nightmare energy, but, like, we don't know what he's actually trying to do. Um, presumably, Kallus' goal is to become a fully-fledged disciple of the Witness, and that involves exterminating your own race of people completely. So this could be some sort of move to destroy Keitel's, uh fleet. Maybe that's the only that's one of the main things I can think of, but... You know, I also think that the Leviathan is going to be sticking around for a while, probably even past the next year here, I would imagine, given that they brought it back for a patrol space. And I'm wondering, you know, I, I just don't think you're going to cut it off from the moon completely. I mean, maybe at the end of this season, and I guess you could access it from a different node or something if we end their kind of moon plotline. But I would be extremely surprised if after, you know, how pivotal Callus was to, you know, the vanilla version of the game and how many hints... We've gotten about his return before this. I would just be shocked if we put all this to bed, you know, with the events of a single season and this nightmare thing. Like, we still don't really even know where Callus is. Like, we still have never seen Callus in the flesh. He's all automatons and nightmares and things. Like, he's talking to us, but, like, we know he's an actual Cabal because he's Keitel's father. He's not, like, a scion in a Cabal suit, I don't think. Uh, but it just seems like there's a lot on the table here to just sort of wrap the end of this up with a neat little bow and Keitel comes to terms with her gall nightmare and we sever the bond and live happily ever after. Uh, I do wonder if all of this could also be revolving around some sort of larger secret as in like a secret exotic quest. Um, unless, am I missing something? We only have two exotics this season and only one of them is technically in this season. We have Heart Heartstopper, is that, I, can, I don't have it, so I don't know the name of it. Heart Shadow? Heart, one of those. You know, the, the, the Heart Sword. Uh, that's in the dungeon. Dungeon is sold separately, so technically this is not seasonal content. And then the only other exotic is Trespasser, which is in the season pass. Usually we have some sort of earned season exotic within the season. Like even last season, which was attached to a full expansion, we had the Box Obscura quest for uh, whatever the hell that weapon's called. <laughs> can't remember anything right now my brain is melted i'm sorry but um generally speaking there is usually some sort of earned exotic uh in the course of a season i mean maybe they're counting uh the dungeon exotic as that but i i do wonder if we could all if this could all be heading toward uh some other mission inside the leviathan that we're not predicting that could produce some sort of exotic you know later in the season i haven't seen anything data mine about this i'm not like going to look for data mines or anything like you know, on purpose, but um, this is just me kind of gauging the vibe of what content is happening this season and where things, I think, they're going or not going. So I guess we'll find out. It just seems like we are headed towards some sort of twist here that we can't fully process. I would be shocked if we did not face some sort of nightmare version of Callus with Keitel, 
Um, whether it's for the reasons I described and the way I described, I don't know. But uh, to me, that seems like where things are headed. And um, I don't think Zabala is going to die or anything. But uh, I, I don't think this is going to be as straightforward as it might look right now. And again, I don't think we'll know anything for sure until maybe the week after next reset, uh, when that should be the end of the you know, the three nightmare forgiveness quests, but uh, I guess we'll find out. So anyway, thanks for watching and I will talk to you later. Take care.